That looks good. Let's do backwards hat today. I mean, it's always backwards hat day. What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And today I'm extremely excited. I've been waiting like eight months for this, but Premiere Pro finally came out with an update that we can run the Canon Cinema Raw light files natively right inside. Before the workflow was super hard. If you see 200 users know what I'm talking about, transcoding, proxies, all the annoying stuff. We won't have to do it anymore. We may still have to work with proxies depending on the power of your computer, but I'm gonna use my Mac Pro back here just to show you how it works. A lot of you guys have been asking me about my Mac Pro, and for some reason the upgrade Mac Pro video has like over 200,000 views, which is crazy. But I mainly built that computer back there just to transcode these RAW files into ProRes files, but now I don't need to. So I'm gonna show you how it works on the Mac Pro. It'll definitely work better on my PC because I have a GTX 1080 Ti in there. My Mac Pro only has an RX 580, so we can run the files back at like half quality, not full quality, but they do run pretty much like normal 4K video. So let's jump into that and I'm gonna show you guys how this works. All right, so I'm gonna show you the workflow before Premiere got the update. And basically you had to use Cinema Raw development through Canon. So if we click on some of the raw files here, this was some just random footage that I had from my GH5S versus Canon C200 low light test. And in here you can pretty much preview any file you want that's raw coming off the camera. It'll play back, it'll let you adjust the brightness, the white balance, the sharpness. It'll allow you to change your color space and the gamma. So if I didn't wanna shoot in C-Log3, I could change it to C-Log2 if I wanna get a little bit more dynamic range. I generally like using C-Log3, it's a little bit easier to grade. But inside here you can adjust you know, your exposure and stuff like that to the raw file. And then when you're done, you go to add to export queue. Inside the export queue, you can go to the gear right here. I've got it set to ProRes 444 because it doesn't make those massive insane files that the DPX files are. The DPX files are like bigger than the raw files and it's just stupid to work with. So basically inside here, we can go to ProRes 444. We can change our gamma to C-Log2, C-Log3, whatever we want. Go OK and then export. So as you can see, I got my Mac Pro. It's like a 12 core, 24 thread, dual CPU monster. So it's just chewing through the footage. It rips through it pretty quick. We're already at 50%. I'm just gonna cancel it here. But when it's done, it'll make it ProRes files. You can actually also export a proxy as well at the same time. And I've had to do that in the past as well. But now that Premiere has the update, we don't have to do this anymore. So let's open up Premiere and I'll show you how that works. All right, so once you're inside Premiere, basically it's just the same way as you would normally dump any type of files, like MP4s or anything like that. This time we're gonna go to my one terabyte SSD. I've got some CRM files here from just some random clips from a music video I shot a couple weeks ago. And basically you can open up the clips. You can play them back in the preview browser here. They play back perfectly at half the quality. If I set these to full quality, they play for a little bit and then they start to lag. And I think that's just dependent on this video card. It's only an RX 580. Some people would say only, but Compared to my 1080 Ti, it's not nearly as powerful. So I know that on my 1080 Ti, these play back full quality. So basically what I'm gonna do is right click this and go new sequence from clip. As you can see, these are 4096 by 2160, 24 FPS. This is 12 bit raw. I can scrub through the timeline. It's like smooth as butter. I can hit play. No problems. I'm at quarter quality. I could probably go to half. And it's playing back no problem. So what I wanna show you that's really cool is if you double click on this and go to effects controls, we get all of our raw settings that we got in the Cinema Raw development program, except for sharpness. You don't get sharpness settings. So we have color temperature, if you wanna change the white balance, the tint, the exposure, the color space, and the gamma. So I shot this in C-Log3, so if I put this back to C-Log3, that's basically how it looks on how I shot it. Now this is kind of similar to what it's like to work with red raw files, so the R3D files open up like this except for you get a little bit more settings, like more raw settings, like being able to change the ISO and stuff like that. But I assume that changing your exposure in here is something sort of similar, probably not exactly the same, but the exposure values are changing to the raw clip. They're not kind of like an overlaying layer like they would be if you put like Lumetri on it and did the exposure on that. So yeah, if we wanna bump the exposure up to like one, we can do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw some color grading on it quick just because this is just log footage. Click on the clip. So in here, I'm just gonna quickly go through and do like a quick grade. So we can put some more contrast on it, bring the highlights back, bring our shadows down a little bit, bring the blacks down a little bit and pull our saturation up. 
Now that's looking pretty good. The color temp is pretty close to what I want. I think that the highlights are a little bit too cool. So I'm gonna bring them down to a little bit more warmer. So take our highlights and move them a little bit more towards the orange red area. Midtones bring up a little bit warmer. Shadows bring down a little bit cooler. Pull our shadows down a little bit more. And that looks pretty good for that grade. So as you can see, it's running it pretty much perfectly. No lag or anything. Now if I double these clips up, let's see how it handles that. It's gonna throw three clips on top of each other. Playback is pretty much smooth with three clips. That's raw footage with grading and it's handling it no problem. So it's pretty smooth. I'm pretty impressed with how this works. It doesn't necessarily have all the same options that the red raw files would, but this is definitely better than having to go through and transcode everything. Uh, if your computer can't handle this, like a MacBook Pro or something like that, you can make your proxies and then link these out after when you wanna render them. But yeah, that's basically all I wanted to show you guys. If you are a C200 user, and you have Premiere and you mainly edit in Premiere, it's so much better. It makes the C200 so much more valuable to me. And back eight months ago when I bought it, I was really hoping that this was just gonna work inside of Premiere and it's taken this long. Finally, we have it, no more transcoding. You may have to transcode some proxy files if you have like a MacBook Pro and you can't handle the raw files. I don't know if there's gonna be any more options to the raw stuff down the road, but the fact that we have this now, no more transcoding, I'm happy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. If you like my new camera angle, give it a thumbs up. Anyway, you guys, I'll talk to you later.